And I can speak now to Ron Paul. You know exactly who he is, former U.S. congressman, founder of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, the man that to many Americans would have liked to have seen president as well. Pleasure to have you on, Ron. Uh, G7 leaders, they seem hurt by these new U.S. tariffs. The question is, can they do anything about it? Can they do anything to retaliate, or is it just hot air? Well, I think they can, but I'm not optimistic that they will because they complain about it. But I'm not sure they're as determined because I think that the uh, United States still intimidates a few of them. And uh, we do have a lot of power. We have the military power. We have the control of the international financial system. We have the, uh, the dollar system and uh, we put on sanctions. So they're easily intimidated. But I think uh, long term something will happen because I think there will be enough annoyance by our policies that maybe there will be an alternative to, uh, to the dollar as the reserve currency of the world. And I know Russia and China and India and some of these other countries would like to see that happen. So I think it'll come that way. But I don't think uh, I don't think as much is going to happen at, at this meeting. Matter of fact, I think Trump's looking forward to it because he, he thrives on this. And uh, I think he'd be uh, handled better with silence rather than playing his game of starting and say, hey, Mr. Trump, you're a bad guy. Why are you doing this? We're going to gang up on you because I don't think they'll follow through. But uh, Trump, Trump loves a battle like this, and uh, I think there'll be a lot of battling there, but uh, not much will come of it. But uh, it, it, is, it is a serious problem what's going on, especially if one does not like tariffs in a tariff war. And I think that's a consequence of many bad policy, including monetary policy. So a tariff war is just horrible, and eventually it will hurt. United States a whole lot but right now uh, we still are powerful and uh, Trump has a bully pulpit and he has a lot of a lot of wealth uh, behind it and he has the military behind it and I'm afraid that too many people roll over and are intimidated by his threats why won't they take action is it pure fear is there something they could do getting together if what if they just bombarded the US with tariffs collectively it would that still not influence well, well, I, I think it's an unknown. Uh, they know that we're powerful, and I thought it was a little bit encouraged uh, when the Europeans spoke out after uh, Trump took us out of the uh, nuclear agreement with Iran. I thought, well, the Europeans will stand up to it. This is business. You know, the libertarian looks at trade in a very positive way because we think trade is the answer to the fighting. The more trade you do, the less you're going to fight. I think, you know, Russia has been providing goods and services to Europe. Why, why are we, why are even they participating in our policies of putting missiles up on the border? Because it's trade that'll bring us together. And that's why Europeans, uh, you know, we're getting to like this idea of buying and selling with the Iranians. But uh, all of a sudden, uh, I think the noise that we hear now is, well, we, we have to be careful. And maybe they think Trump will back down, which he might. You know, a lot of times, look how hostile he was to North Korea. And all of a sudden, you know, he's tune change, but I think that might just be strategy too, because people are looking at that and they're not paying enough attention to some other hot spots in the world, uh, mainly in, in Europe and the Middle East and, and what's going on there. So uh, I, I still think that the power that we have as the world policeman and the world uh, financier, that people are afraid, at least on the short run, that they will be injured. But I think that uh, most of the people, the leaders, the other uh, six countries are going to try to be really, really tough uh, on Trump and make a lot of noise because they have to look tough. They're going to go home and they're going to say, look, I stood up to the president. And uh, yet uh, that is not the answer because uh, Trump usually wins all those types of arguments. He proved it in our campaigning. He just took that over and he said things and did things and controlled the media. He's it's almost like, don't cross me or I'll start twittering <laughs> what you're doing. And, uh, and, and sometimes I think they back down. That may change. It may even change this weekend if it gets out of control. But I think it, uh, toward the end it will be smooth sailing and they're going to agree on something. And even Trump is going to come around and say, oh, all right, I'll sign. Uh, I'll sign the agreement and we're coming together and agree on something. But they, they're not even addressing the real problems, which is uh, financial debt, that debt going on, the central banking, uh, the business 
business cycle that I'm so interested in and uh, the message of free trade. The people who are arguing against Trump aren't for free trade. Some of them are calling him isolationist. He's not an isolationist. He's a globalist and he's an authoritarian and, and we have an empire. So he is far from an isolationist. So all that noise doesn't do much good. Ron, you, you said a moment ago you think that this will end with, with some kind of agreement on both sides. We're talking about the president who wrote the art of the deal. Was this the plan all along? Is he leveraging EU countries? Is he getting them offside just as a way of re-maneuvering them into position to back his sanctions on Iran? I, I think so, and I think that's why the markets aren't so worried. I mean, ordinarily, if you just lay it out there on what he's saying and planning to do and what it could lead to, the markets will, shouldn't be euphoric. So they don't believe that's going to happen, but I don't think anybody knows exactly what's going to happen because sometimes when push comes to shove, uh, more things happen than uh, people are expecting. But right now, he might be just maneuvering. They're betting on that, and he has done that on foreign policy, but there are certain things that he does not back down on. Uh, for instance, he did. He campaigned on, and he did not back down in on on Iran, and that's why we're moving in this direction. So maybe he'll stick to his guns on these uh, on these tariffs. But they're, they're punishing us, the American taxpayer, the American consumer, and he's punishing our allies. So it really doesn't make any sense. If it comes through that he does everything that he's threatened to do, yeah, I think it'll crash the market. But right now, people are saying. Well, he's talked this way be before. Let's, let's wait and see. We'll maneuver and we'll pretend we get something from it and uh, march on. So uh, it, it's sort of an unknown. And I think it'll be interesting and, and worth watching over this weekend. But I just don't think anything real positive is coming up because I don't think they talk about the real problems that cause our, uh, our climate of hostility in trading and coming up with this. Because I think it all has to do with fiat currency and the uh, dollar reserve currency that causes these imbalances because when we get to print the money and spend it and we don't have to earn it that causes imbalances for us to say that we with our economy booming blaming it on everybody else that eventually people are going to get tired hearing that can we just hypothesize for one moment let's imagine this was the game plan all along EU countries back down on Iran they support sanctions Trump backs off on his tariffs, which you think would be a disaster, so no danger there. He negotiates peace on the Korean Peninsula. Is this absolute genius from Donald Trump? He could get all the things that he said he, he was going to aim for. Or is it extremely dangerous to be playing these games with what were major allies? Well, I think it's dangerous, and uh, I hope the danger dissipates, and I hope he does have something up his sleeve. But his close advisors, I go by uh, appointments and advisors, and even the uh, individuals traveling with him, theoretically, or will be traveling with him to North Korea, uh, the, the summit. Uh, aren't friends of liberty and they're not uh, they're they're there to uh, maintain a hostility to North Korea so as much as I have praised the opening up and the willingness to talk uh, I, I want to see it first I sure hope that my skepticism is wrong but uh, I think he sort of maybe personally liked the idea that uh, he would be seen as a as a peacemaker uh, so this this hope that is the case but right now uh, I think it's dangerous. You ask whether it's dangerous. I think it's very dangerous because there are sometimes unintended consequences. Sometimes people say and do things. Sometimes there are unintended consequences and, and sometimes there are false flags that come up mm -hmm. and I don't like what's happening in the South China Sea. You know, I believe that we should have a powerful Navy. It's okay with me to have the most powerful in the world. But I'd like to keep it in the Gulf of Mexico or, or someplace close. But I don't, I don't think we need to be so insecure that we have to be uh, patrolling the South China Seas. That kind of stuff doesn't make any sense to me. Ron, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Some fascinating views. Ron Paul, my guest, former U.S. Congressman, founder of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity.